you've got to realize that whatever you're doing, you're competing with somebody. What is it that gives you an advantage over your competition? Whatever you're good at, try to be great at it. And if you're great at it, good things will happen. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. This is the Maverick Podcast. I'm your host, DJ Maverick. Today, we are rolling out the red carpet. Once again, we have an all-star in the building, the one and only Hilda de Leon Xavier. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's the first time that I'm being at, the, at a podcast. So That's awesome. This is an honor for me to be here with you. We are very honored to have you too, Director of the Guatemalan Association here in Oklahoma. And then also the new co-founder of Jóvenes Latinos Emprendedores y Profesionales in Oklahoma, right? Yes, that's correct. Perfect. For the 1% of the people out there that don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm from Guatemala. Um, I came to USA in 1992. Okay. I went to Northwest Classend. Uh, well, I went to Harding Middle School. I went to Northwest Classend just right here in front of this building. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've been here since 1992. Very cool. Tell me a little bit about the experience of Guatemala, because I know that you're super proud of where you're from. So tell me, what was it like growing up in Guatemala? Well, my childhood in Guatemala was amazing. I'm from a village. It's called Las Brisas Civilia, Quetzaltenango, Guatemala. So we have a lot of animals. Uh, I was a pastora de ovejas. <laughs> no way, really? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so cool. I would go to the river. I would go and wash clothes there. I would go to Las Posas to carry, to bring water to the yeah. house. So it was just an amazing uh, childhood. And, uh, you know, uh, we didn't have toys. So our toys was just like uh, jugar con la tierra, playing with the sand. Yeah. And um, just be outside. Uh, there were no cars, so we could be all day and all day, all outside. night outside. Yes. Wow. So when I hear that, it sounds super relaxing, but I'm sure it was a lot of work to be working out in the field and everything. What was that like? Was it tough or what? Yes, it was tough because yeah. I, I, my dad was in Oklahoma and um, okay. my mom raised five kids. So we had to grow the the um, corn and we would have to um, work in the field. So, yeah. yes, for men, it was very tough. For for me as a child, well, it was pretty fun. Yeah. And what were your <laughs> dreams? Did you have dreams of like being a teacher, being a lawyer or a doctor? What did you want to do when you grew up? No. So I used to watch, um, well, let me tell you something. In Guatemala, I thought there were only three countries, Mexico, USA, and Guatemala. So I used to watch uh, Siempre el Domingo. Yeah. I think that's what it, it was called, Con el Señor Velasco. Yeah. So I used to watch all the show, the Folklorico Mexicano and Mariachi. So I wanna, I wanted to be a dance performer. Okay. And I wanted to dance Mexican folkloric. Very cool. So even from a young age, you were attracted to the dancing and the arts and everything. Correct. Yeah. Did, how did you learn how to do that? How did you get involved with it? So I came in 92. So... Half of my family were in Guatemala and half here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So without learn, I mean, without speaking English and not having friends, it was very difficult. So I met uh, Graciela Lopez, uh, my best friend in my childhood, and uh, her sister used to dance at Yumare Mexican Folklore. Okay. So I was part of Yumare for two two to three years. Wow. So I was able to learn how to dance folklorico. So, so you didn't explore dancing until you got here to the U.S.? Correct. You never danced or performed in Guatemala? Just um, going to quinceañeras, yeah. ferias, uh, weddings. Well, we didn't have a lot of quinceañeras, but mainly weddings and uh, ev uh, events at our little um, town. Okay. So, you know, I would just dance cumbias, norteñas, uh, marimba, of course. Yeah. And then um, I always dreamed to perform in front of hundreds of people, and especially folklorico mexicano. So finally, in 93, I danced folklorico. Awesome. 
Yeah. What was that like? Do you remember the first performance? Were you yes. nervous? Was, was there a lot of people? What was uh, it like? I was nervous. And uh, Folklorico Mexicano, it's uh, girls have to wear a lot of makeup. Yeah. So Sonia Mireles, she would um, help me to do my makeup. Okay. And um, it was nervous because my family were not there, but Sonia was there for me and Graciela. And uh, I actually was not nervous. I was just excited. You're like, I'm ready. Yes. I'm <laughs> I've been ready waiting all my life for this. Correct. The dresses and everything. They're heavy. They're really heavy. They're so heavy. it's tough, right? Yes, yeah. but they're very easy to wear. Okay. But what the Guatemala uh, tires and from India, it's very difficult. It has a special thing to, to wear it. But Folklorico Mexicano is just very easy, but to perform, of course, it's very heavy. Yeah. What was your experience here at the school? So you got here, you know, from Guatemala. What was that reception like from the other kids? Was it pretty easy to adapt? No, it was not easy because no. I was the only Guatemalteca at Hardy Middle School. No way. Yes. And okay. then uh, one year after, um, I probably you know him, uh, Ronnie Medrano. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mario Medrano's uh brother so he was the second guatemalteco so you know we even though we speak spanish mm -hmm. but we have different accent Everything. and different words yeah. the food is different so there were a few uh kids from mexico but um i think they used to make fun of my accent or the words that i used to use yeah so not only that that it was challenged with uh, uh kids that are hispanic um English, it was very difficult. So I was in the class of ESL, yeah. which as a second language. I was there the whole entire day, every day, because I was not able to go to other classes due to the language. Sure. So it was tough. Did you feel like you, you were catching on pretty quickly or did you sort of like gravitate towards music and everything? Because you come here, you don't know anybody, so you still want to, you know, capture that culture and feel like you're part of something, right? Yeah, I felt lonely yeah. because uh, first I was the only Guatemalteca and we were there with some kids that were from India, Vietnam and China. So okay. that was the group that I used to hang out. That's cool. Kind and, of an international yes, group. That's but, really cool. But you know what? None of us knew how to speak English. Okay. So I don't know how we uh, <laughs> communicate yeah, each other. That's funny. Yeah. So that's why I started um, performing because uh, that was my thing. Like uh, it made me a relief because yeah. uh, my sisters and my bro one of my brother were in Guatemala. So it was sad because the language, the food, and uh, not friends and family. Yeah, so the the dancing became your outlet and your stress relief, I yes. guess, right? And still uh, is. And you continued that through high school. Was the high school a little bit better as far as diversity? Yeah. yeah. So a high school, so high school, yeah, we were f maybe ten or yeah, I think we were like maybe ten from Guatemala. Okay. And uh, more from other countries too. So at Harding, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in Northwest Classen. Um, I participated at soccer. I played soccer for two years. Cool. And I was part of the Latino club from La Agencia Latina. Yeah. And uh, I was part of the company, dance company. I think it was for two years. For the school. For the school. So you were dancing like other rhythms at that point. Yes. Like hip hop and everything. Jazz, right? modern dance. Yeah. Yes. It was a, a different style. Yeah. It's more nervousness. Where do you think that love for dance came? Was there somebody that in your family that was a dancer or was it just you? No. Um, my dad family are musicians. Oh, uh, okay. And they love to party. Yeah. So there's always <laughs> they music. They love to party, yeah. yes. Okay. Yes. But nobody professionally danced or no. anything. You were kind of the pioneer. Yes, kind of. Kinda. Yeah. Yes. That's really cool. So you were part of that and I'm sure dancing hip hop and everything, you got to meet other students and then was it easier to adapt at that point or what? Yeah, it was easy. It was yeah. easy after. Um, even though English for me was very difficult, I, I don't know why it took me forever. Yeah. I think I was afraid for me to speak English because I could hear my friends making fun of my... The my accent and Accent, stuff. Yeah. yes. And um, I stopped caring about my accent until a friend of mine said... Hilda, your accent sounds 
very cool, very yeah. sassy. You sound like uh, Salma Hayek and uh, Penelope Cruz, and I was like, I can't go wrong with that. I was like, really? <laughs> Let me so, talk some more. Right? <laughs> you, yeah. you remember how we used to have those, uh, not the CDs, but the tapes? Yeah. You could record yourself. Uh huh. I'm talking about the 90s, right? Or yeah, the 90s. So I used to record myself in English. I used to dislike it. I did not you didn't like, like the, the sound. No, nope, no, nope. no. I was like, how can I improve my my English? Till yeah. my friend told me uh, that my English sound pretty nice. So then he compared my accent with these two amazing movie stars. I was yeah. like, fine. You're like, let's do it. <laughs> I'm just gonna continue. I don't care about my accent. Yeah. Tell so. Tell me about that. You started recording yourself because you wanted to practice and better yourself, or or you just wanted to record yourself just to see what you sounded like. I just wanted to see how I sound and how yeah. I can improve. Okay. And it kind of helped me. Yeah. yeah. I think I still have those tapes in the no attic. Way. We're going to have to look for them. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to share them. Yeah. That's cool. So I know that you, you're you know, super proud of being from Guatemala. You kind of you know became this leader for people in Guatemala and people here in Oklahoma, you know, keeping that culture alive, basically. So... How did that come about? Did you just start getting involved in festivals, through school, through dancing? Where did that love start? Yeah. Well, thank you. So I actually don't consider myself as a leader. You don't I, think so? I, I think so. Anytime that I, that I hear people like Guatemala or we need somebody to dance here, it's always like, call Hilda, call Hilda. She has you. the connections. Yes, thank yeah. you. I think uh, a leader, it's, I don't know, I feel like that person has to do so much for the community. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you for calling me leader. So um, in 92, I came here undocumented. And I, I, not a lot of people knows, but I was undocumented for 24 years. Okay. So finally, um, five years ago, I became um, resident. And wow. then last year, I became U.S. citizen. Congrats. That's so, awesome. Thank you. It's, uh, I always tell everybody, keep dreaming, keep I mean, someday your dream is going to come true. So it takes many years. Like for me, it took me 24 years. Mm. So that's that's why I started uh, performing. Okay. And that's why I started like participating in the community as a volunteer. Mm. And um, and I, I was invited in 92 to perform at Hardy Middle School. The Spanish teacher, Miss Evans, they I think that was her. Yeah. yeah, so for that year, they were doing the multicultural event and I was the only Guatemalteca, so they asked me to wear a traditional wear. Okay. And Betty Barrios, she's always support me. She uh, had, she was the only one that had that costume. So that's where it started. Got so it. people found out, so I would perform at the church and then, we were having more Guatemaltecos in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So I started creating my own dance group called Eterna Primavera. Okay. So all of those kids back then, right now, they're married, they have kids, uh, some are nurses. That's incredible. So that's how it started. Okay. And I feel like, you know, you sort of going through that yourself, you were probably able to provide help and maybe, you know, some encouragement to people that are arriving here from Guatemala. And you're like, let me show you the ropes, right? Yes, thank you. So through dance, uh, we uh, represent Guatemala uh, with the traditional wear. We present cultura. Yeah. So I have some kids that they want to learn um, uh, or tradition. Mainly the kids that are, their parents are from Guatemala. And we have some that are from Mexico and Guatemala too. Uh, so... Yes, uh, we we like to represent Guatemala with the Eterna Primavera, and we have the Guatemala page in Oklahoma that's been for 18 years. Yeah. So that's the leadership. That's Let's dive we into have that, because you, you started getting involved in pageants as well, right? How did that come about? So the pageant, uh, let's see. Um, I was never, so in you know, in our countries, we have like, La Reina del Deporte, or we have different titles. Okay. And uh, my two sisters were queens. I was not. I oh, was okay. like, why nobody's inviting me? <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, well, maybe because I was the youngest one, but I really like pageants. So that's um, 18 years ago with my 
cousin Rudy Barrios, he started the event for Independencia Guatemala. Okay. Independencia de Guatemala. So he asked me to be in charge of the entertainment. So then I brought the idea about uh, gi uh, having a queen called Senorita Independencia, which means Miss uh, Independence Guatemala. Yeah. So that's how it started. And then years later, people would ask me, why don't you have for senoras, for Miss and the little girls? So that's year years later we started having more titles but you never competed yourself you, no. you made the pageant but yes. you never competed no. oh, I, I don't see myself competing <laughs> no no okay no. i i was invited for two different uh pageants but no i don't see i don't see myself with the no. sash and the crown no but i'm sure you know about walking and the dressing yes. and how to answer the questions i'm sure you You've already done a lot of that training. Yeah, probably, I, right? I done a lot of training. I was the uh, director of uh, Miss Miss and Mister International UCO for one year. Okay. And uh, I had trained some of the girls that compete for Miss Fiestas. Some of them had been first runner up, some second runner up. But yeah. someday I will get the crown for them. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So I was also uh, the director and the choreographer for Miss Latina UCO. Okay. And other pageants too. Let's talk a little bit about networking and the importance of networking, because what I see that you're always doing is building that network of yours. Yes, so tell me you. how important that is and how do you keep that alive? So I, so going back in the 90s, um, I think you're, are you from here, Oklahoma? Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, back then we didn't have a lot of support for the youth or even for adults. Yeah. So we struggle a lot, correct? Definitely. And uh, now it's different. Now I think if somebody doesn't go to school or or doesn't know what to do in their life, they're lost. Yeah. For me, it's that. So that's why we we have Guatemaltecos in Oklahoma. We have like um, your podcast that people can can see the videos and they can get information from you guys. So and get inspired. Exactly. I think just seeing people like tell their stories to me, that's super inspirational. Yes. Yeah. So that's how I think networking is very important because there's some people, they don't know what's going on in the community. Yeah. So when we start networking, um, I probably, I need to start doing more networking for myself because there's so much out there that I don't know. And then there's so much that I have that I can give to others. Are you a people person though? Because what I always hear from people is like, yeah, I want to network, but I'm shy or I don't like people, right? So sometimes you have to put yourself out there. Are you a people person or, or what kind of yes, person? Yes, yeah? I'm, I'm both. Okay. Well, before I was more, but right now I think because I have a son that is four years old, I yeah. have to take care sure. care of him and my daughter and other activities that I do. So I get a lot of invita invitations, but it's hard being a being a wife. Yeah, the and, time commitments. Yes, yeah. and uh, participating in events. But no, I'm not shy. Okay. I, I think I'm shy if I have to speak in public. Really? So it's different. Performing, I can, I no can, problem. no problem at all. <laughs> yeah. But uh, speaking public, I think you have to prepare, and I haven't prepared myself for that. Yeah. So, but what I, are some of the tips that you would give to somebody if they want to start networking? So right now, I want to go to a. Um, I don't know if I can give names, but I want to start going to a, a networking that are Hispanics. I think that organization it's American, but okay. they started doing it in Spanish. So I'm doing my research before I start um, going to them. Would you encourage people to network with maybe a cause or a benefit that they're interested in? Like, let's say uh, I like tech. Should I network with other tech individuals or should I network with people that are something completely different? So I'm more well-rounded. Right? So it's, it depends on what your, what your, your goal, like, mm -hmm. If somebody wants to know about podcast, of course I will send. Yeah. I will send you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so it just depends on what you want. Like for me, my my networking right now, my main goal is uh, uh, nonprofit organizations. Okay. And grants. I want to find out more grants. Very cool. So tell me about the Guatemalan organization here in Oklahoma. Is this is something that you were inspired to to be the founder of, or how mm -hmm. did it get started? So Guatemaltecos in Oklahoma, I started it when uh, we used to, we were um, invited for the from the Fiestas de las Americas. Okay. So 
I have a page called Guatemaltecos in Oklahoma, and that's how it started. And I think it's also 18 years ago. Wow. But now, but every time I wanted to have my nonprofit organization, but you know, I didn't have my social security number, and um, I wanted to make it legal, and I yeah. didn't want to make it under somebody else's name. So, and also to have a nonprofit organization, you have to have people that you admire people that are really going to be helping you. Sure. And uh, I didn't have those people back then in my life. But then I started, um, I will say names, I uh, started talking to Saidi Herrera Orellanas, mm -hmm. uh, Cesar um, Harvis, he's going to be the first lawyer from Guatemala. Wow, that's awesome. Padres Guatemaltecos. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Luigi from Cafe Cacao. Yeah, so we made a, yes, so we made a team. They are people that I trust. Yeah. So we started uh, doing the paperwork last year, but Guatemaltecos in Oklahoma has been there for many years. Got it. If you had to give me the elevator pitch of what is Guatemaltecos in Oklahoma, how would you pitch that idea? Like, yes. what's the cause? What is it for? Yeah, so it's a nonprofit organization that we promote, uh, promote cultura and education. Okay. And uh, we try to work with other organizations like mainly Hispanic organization. But I work also with the Asian societies and um, Turkish uh, societies. So we, uh, so when they need help, uh, for example, um, about how to apply for grants. So I always send the link of uh, organizations that they're giving grants. Okay. So we like to support each other. Yeah. I, I'm always impressed with the Asian district uh -huh. and the festivals that they yes, do. Yes, it's amazing. And, and also the support when there's a new business yes. and they all go out and support. I wish we did more of that, you know? Is that kind of what you see also, that we need a little bit more yes, of that? Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's not that we're talking bad about our No, Vasa. not at all. Not <laughs> at all. But I just kind of notice it in yes. other cultures, the, the reception when there's a new business yes. or to celebrate like, you know, traditions and stuff like that, the, the Asian district is really good about that. Yeah. So, you know, somebody told a friend of mine that why Hispanic like to argue Yeah. and they want to be um, like, uh, they don't want other people to go ahead of them. Yeah. And then it, I'm not saying that. So it was a friend that told my friend, but right. she, he's told my friend that, when somebody from Asia comes and they everybody try to pitch in to buy a car for that person. Oh wow! Yes, okay. but that person that got the, the car from uh, from their um, people, whoever comes later on, he has to do the same thing. Got it. That's very cool. Yes, yes. So we need, honestly, we, we really need to learn from our Asian friends. Yeah, even when they open a business, I always see like them promoting and supporting the, the day of the opening. Uh -huh. They're all there to support the business yes. and everything. I think it's super cool the way yes. they do that. Yes, and we are we have a lot of Latinos that are doing that, but I feel like we have to be more um, uh, mas humanos. Yeah. Would you say also the, the organization, the Guatemalans in Oklahoma, is it also about keeping traditions alive? Is, you know, is that part of yes, it Yes, keeping our tradition yeah. alive, um, mainly promoting Guatemala. Okay. And uh, also um, with the Guatemala pageant, uh, the queens, they have to do projects. I see. So maybe five, six, six years ago, I started that every a queen and king they had to have project not only okay. to show up for events so for example brian de leon he just came from guatemala he went to guatemala and um uh he brought some um like paper uh, a package of uh, paper uh, notebooks pencils okay. for the students i think it was more than 300 uh, students that's amazing he went to like four different schools like little villages yeah and you know cesar he he gave i can't remember how many scholarships to students in in the school that he went very cool so everybody has to do a project 
it does not have to be in Guatemala, but yeah. we also have to do it here. That's cool. So you're incorporating a service component to that too. Is there also a performing or arts component to that too, where you encourage them to like maybe perform or yes. sing or dance? Yeah, like that? mainly dance. Uh, okay. Right now I'm, I have this idea to, to teach a choreography for the four queens. Wow. Yes. Cool. And I have the costume already. It's just that the time, I haven't had the time, but I will. Yeah. So it would be the first time that all the queens and the king will be performing do all you, together. Do you still perform yourself? Is that because I, I imagine, you know, I like to DJ and to uh -huh. me, it's super hard to give that up. You know, I'm probably going <laughs> to be in a retirement home DJing in a retirement home. I don't know if it's for you. Is it hard to, to give it up is. dancing? Well, yeah. it is. So I used to perform uh, not only for Clorico, but I used to perform Latin music, especially yeah. salsa, merengue, merengue bachata. Yeah. And uh, I did a lot of shows. And also I went to Kansas, Dallas, and San Antonio, Texas to perform for cool. a big salsa congress. Really? Yes. And I miss it. But it's been six years that I retired from that. So you're officially retired. From uh, yeah. Latin music performing, yes. Yeah. And plus the costumes are different from from the folklorico. Sure. You know, we get older, our body change. Yeah. And I don't think so I want to perform uh, salsa. But I'm sure you miss it. I, right? I do it's, miss it I bet it it's a lot of fun, right? It was yeah. fun. And maybe I get... I get back in shape. Yeah. Maybe I'll start performing. But I mean, that's a great way to stay in shape. It's yes. like fun, right? Yeah, Instead that of was. Going to the gym. I never been to the gyms. Maybe yeah. once in a while, but for me, my exercise was performing. It's like dancing. all the cardio you need, yes. just the dancing, yeah. right? But yeah. I perform only um, the dancers from my country. I only perform when I don't have enough students or I have to replace someone else. Okay. But that's it. Mainly, I'm trying to. I'm trying to be behind stage. I just want my students to be the ones that are giving the show. Very cool. So yes. tell me about this new organization about the Jóvenes Emprendedores and Profesionales. Is that a separate entity from the Guatemalan Association? Yeah. Yes, tell me about that's that. separate. So like you were asking me if I'm a big people. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. Um, I see a lot of youths that they need uh, uh we, we need to believe in them. So I think it's been 12 years that I started nominating. Um, my first ones was Akash Patel from India. Que he speaks Spanish. Wow, that's You cool. need to interview him. Right. He, he has, uh, <laughs> his organization is Happy World Foundation. Okay. I'm, I'm part of his organization. Cool. Yeah. So, and Victor Acosta, you know him. So I started... Uh, nominating them for like Americans awards okay, and uh, some other ladies for women of the years Gloria Torres had won and Jessica uh, Brooks Jimenez, Saidi um, I think there have been the only Hispanas that I had nominated that they chose so it's very hard to choose them because there's like a 1,000 applications. Yeah. So I started, uh, I started, um, sorry, going back to your question, I started nominating because I wanted for them to get an award for their work that they've been doing in the community, not only their job, but their, their service in the community. Sure. So for many years, I've been nominating many people. So then Victor and I had the same same goal, and we started talking, and we were like, why don't we do something like this? Yeah, I know it's out there, but no one is doing it in the Spanish community. So that's how we started, and Victor chose the name, and then we started organizing this event. This is going to be our second year. Wow. So it sounds like you were kind of doing stuff behind the scenes and you just made it more official and have this platform now yes. where you can highlight people that are doing cool stuff around the state, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So we started, we want to do only 20, okay. under 40, but we got a lot of applications. Wow. And okay. it's so hard to to choose. So yeah. we, have, we have a committee that they are the ones that choose. Okay. So, so we decided to, why not choose 10 more? That's why there's 30. But besides that, we also choose five, five adults that there are big supporters of the of our youths. Got it. And the new one is uh, the podcast. 
Okay. But that's a special one. It's Got a special it. one. So we'll see who wins for the podcast. Yeah. We'll find out on the 18th. Definitely. So yes. there's, a, I yeah. guess, a gala component to this too, right? And it's coming up. So yes. Maybe tell me a little bit about the gala and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the, the brainstorming behind it and the idea behind it. Yes. So... So the idea was, you know, after seeing uh, so many youths that are that we need to promote, yeah, um, but we wanted to have a special uh, be Latinos, and uh, and of course I continue. So on this one I don't nominate, but really no I okay. don't nominate because I'm part of the organization and it doesn't look good for me to That's be nominated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so with the Americanos I still nominate. Nominate. So okay. it's it's not that we're copying for them. Well, I mean, some ideas, of course, you know, everybody copies, but uh, we do it like our our own, like Latino. So our gala is gonna be on the twenty nine. It's gonna be on a Thursday at La Bella Event Center. We're gonna have a dinner, and uh, we're gonna have performers. And uh, the keynote speaker is gonna be the La Señora Consulada de México. Okay, she's gonna be. Our, our keynote speaker, and then uh, we're gonna have the dinner performing keynote speaker, and we're gonna have um, at the end we're gonna give the awards. Awesome! So behind the scenes, you've already done the the tallying of the votes and everything to figure out the winners. And, yes, and this is just kind of the gala to present the awards and yes. everything like that. So we give yeah. like a month or two months. So we have a page where um, we put the website there, okay. so anyone can nominate. And it's 20 to, no, 20, 21 to 40. Okay. Yes. So a family, or even if you want to nominate yourself, you also can nominate yourself. And then we close, um, we close the web, um, the link, and then we'll give it to the committee where they have to choose 30 people. Got it. I yes. know not too long ago, um, the official Miss Guatemala was visiting here in Oklahoma, right? Yes. Were you part of that too? Were you responsible for her visiting? Or yes. How did that come about? Oh my gosh, that's a dream come true, you yeah. know? Yeah. Okay, so that was my vision. And uh, I follow her a lot on Facebook. And I was like, man, this would be amazing if I, if I bring her here. It was very hard to bring her here because... She will not respond my messages. You didn't have a connection no, or anything. No. You were just uh, following just her. on Facebook, and yeah. then somehow I, when she won, I, I became friends on social media with her mom. Wow! And I used to send her messages, and then I started communicating with her uh, through Facebook, okay. and then uh, she gave me her WhatsApp number. Got it. And so that's how we started communicating. But with her. Um, she has a director or an assistant that everything I have to communicate with him, not sure. with her. So then we went through emails. So that's how we started communicating. What was her reception like? She was like, where? Oklahoma? I've never heard of it. Like, what was her response when you reached out to her? So she was surprised because yeah. we were inviting her from Oklahoma. And uh, she gave me all this information about... Like, you know, everybody has, when they're famous, they have to have like a, like a rules, what to do, what not to do. Okay. So I get, I sent her in a schedule. These are the activities that you're going to do. And you came up with the agenda for the visit and everything. Yeah. So yeah. Cesar helped me. Okay. He's the secretary. So he, we both created the agenda. So we took her to our sponsors. They were like five sponsors. We took her to, I think in one day she went to three three events awesome. where people can go and take pictures with her at the at the locations mm. yes so then we had a special um lunch with some f special friends uh, it was a private event so they can take pictures with her uh, record her and then the sunday was the main event very cool so were we you had... able to develop a relationship like, well when she came here i'm sure she was probably like like, oh, okay, I get it now. I, I really like the reception yeah. and everything. Yeah, so, you know, e even though I I invited her, and you know, I want to thank Luigi Cafe Cacao. He was her, our biggest sponsor. Awesome. Uh, he took care of her and Cesar, everybody uh, from the committee. Yeah. But 
I was not able to talk to her. I think I really? spoke to her only one time because oh, really? everybody wanted to talk to her. Yeah. And I was like, I know her email. I know her number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to like step Stay back, the back and I'm bit. just going to take wow. pictures and I'm going to have the audience to enjoy her. Yeah. So, yes. Do you foresee her coming back again? Did, was she receptive to the idea of maybe returning or I what? You know, she told Cesar that Oklahoma was one of the best places for her to come because everything yeah. was very well organized. That's very cool. So, and she liked the people, she liked the food, and um, we hope to bring her back. Yeah, that's you very know, cool. You know, since she's bilingual, that helps us a lot. Yeah, so what are your goals for this year? You know, you're doing all this, you know, you've got the gala, you got the different organizations. What else is on your agenda for 2024? Wow. That's pretty, pretty good question. Uh, there's so much. I think you always have to keep dreaming. You know what I do? Every year for New Year, uh, I started making my daughter to do this. You do the vision I board? I write 12. 12. 12. 12. Okay. Like, some I exaggerate. Some are like I know I'm gonna make it. Yeah. But and every time dream I big, yes, right? dream big. every time I do something mm -hmm. that it's in my list, I erase it, and then if I don't do what I want to do, yeah, I still keep it for the next year. Okay. So right now, I just want to continue working with the Asociación Guatemaltecos. We have like twelve projects. Very cool. Yes, we have like twelve projects. Well, one one is the gala, and the other one is the pageant. But we have some other ideas that we want to work in the community. So I hope we can make it. What about building those relationships with other cultures? Right, we were talking about the yes. Asian district, and even yes. you know here in Oklahoma in general. Is that sort of an agenda too? That yes, because I think that would be super beneficial. Yeah. So you know, I spoke to Tune. Okay. I don't know if he's gonna do it or not. Yeah. And I said. Do the same thing what Latinos emprendedores are doing. I would yeah. like to see the Asians to get their own uh, gala for. That'd be amazing. Yes, so yeah. I'm gonna support him if he still want. If he would like that idea, I would okay. help him. So yes, that's our our goal, and to keep working with other organizations. I support GIMA from Panameños in Oklahoma and Ecuadorianos. So we um, we trust a lot each other. Okay. And uh, if they need help, we always give them advice. The help that they're always looking is, of course, besides supporting, like sponsoring. Yeah. Uh, right now, we cannot sponsor. I hope someday. That's one of my main goals that we will support in sponsorship to other nonprofit organizations. Yeah. But uh, mainly networking, helping them for networking um, and make their organization look better. Yeah, I mean, I think just providing that support and then also the awareness. I mean, mm -hmm. that goes a long way. So if you're yes. able to build those relationships and support one another, that's amazing. I yeah, think. Thank you. And one of our main goals right now uh, for the association is to we actually we went I think three months three weeks ago we went to talk to Robert Reese and his uh, group for the Oklahoma City Community College. Okay. We need more scholarship for our undocumented students. Yeah. And not a lot of people know, but they do have scholarships for undocumented students. Okay. The thing is that Just the awareness. no one is asking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's what we're working. We're gonna have an open house for the um, community from the north side. Okay. So that's one of the main things, education. And let me tell you something. So every time there's events at the south side, I invite our people from the north side. They don't want to go. Really? They don't want to go. It's not that far. Come exactly. on, what's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're yeah. not used to go. Yeah. And I love everything they're doing in the South Side. There's more events. There's more support. Sure. And uh, so that's why we have to work more in the North Side. And yeah. um, also, we it's not only on the South Side that they're family with low income. Family with in, with low income, it's everywhere. Right. But even if there's not low income, just the awareness for scholarships and yes. opportunities for all the young people growing up, I think that's yes. super you're beneficial on both sides, right? Yes. South, north side, it doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. And I help a lot with, uh, in private, I don't put it on social media, but kids that they need uh, scholarships, I always tell them, 
apply for Agencia Latina, and I write letters, recommendation letters. Okay. One of the things that our kids need, uh, it's that somebody has to write recommendation letters. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. You know, I have read everything that they ask, recommendation letters, and some of the students... It's a lot of work. Yes, they yeah. don't want to do all that. They don't want to ask, but yeah. we have to. Yeah. So... I am asking students that are graduating, do you need a recommendation letter mm -hmm. or do you need to apply for FAFSA? Because some of them are telling me that it's a lot of work. So for I sure. said, there's a lot of people out there that they can help you. Yeah, And it's super intimidating, especially if you're first generation going uh -huh. to college, all the forms and everything, they can be intimidating if you're, if you're not aware of that, right? Yes, yeah. that's correct. So that's what I, I not only do cultura, but also, education is very important mm -hmm. since um, I was not able. So let me tell you a little bit about why I was not able to go to college and those people that graduated in 98, 99, or 2002. So when I graduated, I was not able to go to college because I, I was not um, resident. Yeah. So years later, I think, 2003, Oklahoma was the second or the third state that was able to go to college. Dream of going, you just weren't able to at the time. Yeah. So now that are more um, support, I tell our youth, you have to go to college. Yeah. And the good thing about community college is you can go there for two years. And uh, Metro Tech, you can go for two years. You don't have to go four, six years. Right. And kind of get a feel of maybe what degree you want to pursue. Yes. You know, do you like math? Do you like science? Mm -hmm. Do you like computers? You can kind of get a feel of that, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's why I, I motivate the students or I, I like to motivate anyone. And I tell them I was not able to go because of my situation. But right now there's so much support. Yeah. So that's, that's why we have cool. to support our next generation. Yeah, for sure. I think another thing that I kind of know about you is that you like to travel, right? So yes. tell me a little bit of everywhere you've traveled, because I know you, you traveled to several places. Yeah, well, so far, um, I've been only to, of course, I went back to Guatemala. I've been there twice. Yeah. I went to India. Otro mundo. What was that like? World. Did, you, oh. did you enjoy the food and everything? Yes. What was it like? Yeah. So I always tell people, if you want to go to a country first, very important, you have to learn how to eat their food. Yeah. Because if you don't like spicy food or if you don't like the food of the country, nope, you're not going to survive unless you're going to buy only McDonald's. Which the McDonald's go, right? is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that's kind of like a miss if you go travel somewhere yes. and you just eat McDonald's. You're not really, yeah. you know, learning about the culture and everything, right? Yeah. So yeah. India was beautiful. And, you know, it's like in the movies and people tell you, there's going to be cows on the street. Yes, there were cows no way. on the street. <laughs> Yeah. And you have to wait for them to just cross. cross. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. So it was a different, and everybody, I think one out of 500 are wearing jeans. Really? From the ladies. And okay. I think that was my mother in law and me. Okay. But every, everybody wears their traditional wear. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And um, in each town, they speak their, di their different language. Mm -hmm. My husband is able to understand three. Wow. Yes. Yes. So I went to India. I went to Dubai. Dubai, it's like. Wow. I've heard that's like Las Vegas pretty much. Like it's Mainly like New York. New York? New You're York. To New York? Yes. Okay. It was very hot. Yeah? Yes. Very hot. But because of the, the timing, mm -hmm. every time I would go inside the car, I would go to sleep. And my husband is like. Don't you want to watch the? Don't you want to <laughs> see like the? missing everything. Yes, the buildings, the buildings. Yeah, the architecture like, is wow. beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Yes, and I was like, I'm sleepy. Yeah. I feel like. like what was a your zombie. favorite place to, to visit there in Dubai? Because I they have the craziest architecture. I went to the my favorite was um oh I forgot the biggest the name of the biggest building building, mm -hmm. I forgot the name. Do you remember how tall it was? Yes. Oh, it was more than ninety. Okay. 90, more than 100. I can't remember. Yeah. It was pretty. But you know what? The elevator, you don't, it doesn't make sound. It, it's just like a. Like a rocket? Like a rocket. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. That's it cool. was fun. Um, I pay everybody that goes there, you have to pay $100. So if someday you want to go, save those $100. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So the other thing that I always ask my guests, if I pull up your playlist, who am I going to find on your playlist? So I'm going to put you on the spot. What are you listening to these days? What kind of music? What kind of artist? Oh. Tell me a little bit about when that. When I'm in the car driving to work, Christian music. Okay. I love Christian music. When I'm at my house with the kids, we play Bollywood music. Really? Yes. Okay. And salsa, mm -hmm. and merengue, bachata, and uh, mainly cartoon music because of my kids. <laughs> That's funny. That's cool. Yes. Do they also enjoy performing, or do you see any of the traits from you? Yes. That are, you know, now with your younger kids, are they? My my daughter um, loves to perform. Okay. And she's very good in hip hop or modern dance, but she's very shy performing in front of public. But at really? the house, she makes her own choreographies. Like she watches uh, somebody performing, and when she goes home, she's imitating that person. And I said, Adeline, why don't you dance like this in front of public? And she's yeah. like, no. But she's very good. But right now, she's changing. So she's into sports. She's very good at volleyball. Okay. Yes, my son, so he's little, but he he has the rhythm. That's cool. Are you also rhythm. making sure that the Guatemalan traditions are being kept alive with them too? Yes. Do you expose them to all the culture? Yes, uh, especially yeah. my daughter. So my daughter, um, because of uh, teaching her, um, I mean, bringing her to all these events in the Hispanic Asian events, so she knows which dances from Colombia, Panama, Panama yeah. Uh, Venezuela. So yeah, she... She's getting to know the difference, which is good. That's why we need to teach our kids that not only Guatemala, Mexico, and Oklahoma exist. Right. So she knows. She's very good at that. And my son, um, I'm starting to talk to him about saying the word Guatemala, India. So cool. she knows about, uh, She said he says, I want to go to my mama. And I said, which mama? Mama India or mama Guatemala? So he knows the difference. That's cool. Yes. So, you know, times have changed and now there are more resources or social media. But what would you say is different or what are some of the challenges that you see the youth today that they're facing that maybe we didn't get to experience, but now there's different challenges, right? I think it's social media. You think it's social yes. media just in itself? Yeah. 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 I'm not, I feel like I'm not around so many youths like I used to. I used to teach choreographias for quinceañeras. Oh, yeah. And I okay. knew, so I, I used to do like a quinceañeras every Saturday. Yeah. When I was younger, not anymore. But I used to know what's going on in, the, in their In the world, in their the world. youth, yeah. But right now it's like, it's different. But with I'm going to talk about... Uh, what's out there on YouTube with my son. I see there's so many negative things that it's been a month that he's not using any computer okay. for YouTube videos or my phone. Uh, we just play safe cartoons for him. Yeah, And it goes the same thing for my daughter. For my daughter, she's almost 12. She's not allowed to use phones. We, we haven't bought her a phone and she's not going to till she gets older. But during school, she's not allowed to have a phone. Yeah. I think it is different nowadays. I mean, social media could be good and bad, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of information at your fingertips. Yes. But then there could also be a lot yeah. of negative as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So that's the thing that I see. But in an, I work at the Oklahoma City County Health Department. Okay. And um, it's every year, same thing, like what I went through. Anybody that comes to this country... They need support. Mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of help with uh, filling up for the sooner care. Those are for the kids that are born here. Yeah. But for the kids that are coming from other countries, um, I see a lot of people from Central America, not only at the health department, but I seen at events that I go, we're having a lot of Cubans, a lot of Venezolanos, and from Central America, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. So now they are the ones that need need our help. I see. What yeah. keeps that ambition alive and that drive for you? Because I'm sure, you know, you've got your day job, you know, you've got all these time commitments. What keeps you sort of motivated to do all these things outside of that for all the people and benefiting and, you know, 
doing all the volunteer work that you do. Yeah, thanks for asking. So as a undo- since I was undocumented and I, wa- I know how difficult it was, mm-hmm. so when people uh, ask me to support them, to help them give uh, advice, so when I see that um, what I have gone through and now they're doing, the- they're going through the same thing, and when I'm there supporting them, that makes me happy. That makes me to continue yeah. to help I others. I bet it's super rewarding to see yes, that, right? Yes, yeah. it is. And I know there's so much that I can do, but I mean, it takes time. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to thank you for being on the podcast. You know, uh, anytime you want to come and, you know, promote any event that you're doing or promote any, you know, gala or just bring awareness to what you're doing, thank feel you. free to stop by. You're oh, always welcome. Muchas gracias por la invitación. All right. There you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, super talented. Hilda de León Xavier.